The long-awaited Zeppon computerized head. I think they've been teasing this item for over two years now, when the controls for the head appeared on their app, but with no head to connect it to. Right now, it's not available through the major retailers like B&H or Amazon in the US, but I found this one on AliExpress, and I believe it's now available on eBay too. If you've watched any of my videos here before, you'll notice that this is not my usual setup. Almost a year ago, I had to fill my studio space with some equipment for storage, making it impossible to film. And as a result, it's been nearly 10 months since I've uploaded any content for YouTube. My regular production work has continued as usual, but my YouTube has not, which is a real bummer for me, because I'd finally gotten my studio to a place where it was relatively easy to set up for filming, and I thought the results were at least passable. I had hoped to have the issues resolved months ago, but I finally reached the conclusion that I needed to produce, even if it was not with the typical ease or frankly the usual professionalism that I had before. I've got a ton of products and ideas to share, so I plan to post more frequently now. So we've waited for years for the Zippon Pons, their motorized pan and tilt head. What's it like? Like all of Zippon's gear, it is heavier than you'd expect, weighing in at nearly two pounds. If you're trapped in a dark alley, it's gonna be a great weapon. The head itself is part of a system that you can control both the horizontal and vertical motion. The system is actually made up of just two identical heads on an arm, which is great because you don't need to buy both at once if you're on a budget. Or at least that's true in theory. In practice, for the moment, you can't buy the connecting arm by itself, so you need to either buy the full system or the single head. I'm on a budget, so I bought just one, and I'm hopeful that the arm will become available soon. The single head costs a little under 200, depending upon the outlet, and the dual system with arm runs about 475, which is exceptional pricing. Okay, that's a little tongue in cheek. Paying $200 for a pan head does seem kind of steep considering how simple the technology is that makes it work. I mean, compare that to the complexity of a gimbal. And you can get pan heads for a cheaper, but what you can't get for less is the integrated system. If you're starting from scratch buying their smallest slider and the dual pawns head system for full mobility, it'll set you back roughly $850. That's a pricey bit of gear. But Zippon's competitor in this ecosystem is really Etachrome, and a full Etachrome system runs in the ballpark of two grand. And their Pond's equivalent, the Head One, will set you back about $350 by itself. Like the Zeppon slider, the Pons features a minimalist design with just a couple of buttons. In fact, it's pretty much a good mimic of the slider, with a power button and two left and right buttons. And in what seems to be a tradition at Zeppon, they've included a mystery teaser, because this looks like an LED panel on the side. I don't know if or how that might be utilized. Like the slider, you can set your in and out movements on the device itself by double tapping on the power button, moving to the end location, and then double tapping again. Your next double tap will send the head from A to B or vice versa. And if you hold down one of the arrows when you double tap, it will loop continuously. But it's in the app that the real magic happens. And by that, I mean the timing of the pan movement to the slide movement. I'll talk more about the app in a moment. The Pons boasts a whopping 50 kilogram weight load when panning in a horizontal orientation, which for us Americans is 110 pounds. And it has a more modest four kilogram or nine pound limit when tilting vertically. The 110 pound weight load is curious considering Zeppon sliders themselves can only support about 17 pounds, but at least we know that the head isn't gonna be the weak point in the system. And you can always use it directly on your tripod with heavier setups. Despite its simple and familiar design, it does have one nifty little trick up its sleeve, and that's the retractable screw head. Or is it bolt head? Well, either way, it's actually very convenient to have both the quarter and the 5 8 attachments always available without having to futz with an adapter, and also the ability to submerge the bolt altogether and flip the pawns over for a rotating tabletop. So how well does it work? I find the motion to be very smooth and quite solid. You don't get the sense that it will jerk or stutter with heavier setups. 
In my review of the Zeppon slider last year, my one complaint was the noise level. The slider is not thunderously loud, but you do need to keep it away from mics. At its fastest speed, the motorized head suffers from the same issue, though it is slightly quieter. The tone is also slightly lower. If you're running both the slider and the head together at full speed, the pair is definitely audible. The good news is that for interviews, you're unlikely to be using them at top speed, and slower movement is essentially silent. For an interview, you're likely to set the speed between just 15 and 30% of full. Having used my Zeppon slider for over a year now, I've been very pleased with its performance, but it has given rise to one more complaint. In the fastest mode, the slider is still pretty slow for some B-roll moves. The head fares a little bit better in this regard. At its fastest, it can complete a full circle in 30 seconds, which doesn't seem very fast, but in most circumstances, you're likely to be traveling between 40 and 90 degrees, which takes roughly 3 to 6 seconds. Movement faster than that can cause issues with jello and are a lot harder on the eyes. Still, you might find special moments when you want more. On my Android phone, the app connects quickly and sets up easily, but I find the current version of the app to be slightly buggy when you need to correct your settings. It occasionally crashes when removing a single waypoint, and the speed adjustment often locks up. Going back to the setup menu and then forward into the controls generally resets things. And currently, the slider pauses at each waypoint, making continuous movement impossible. And quite likely, it makes having multiple waypoints kind of silly. The pause issue is supposed to be fixed in a future update. I mentioned that the Edochrome app is better, and that's also because you can control the ease in and out functions to your liking. Zeppon, listen up. And if I'm making a wish list, I'd like to include a case for the slider and the pond's head. With dust and dirt being a real issue for any slider, cases are especially important. Every slider and every control system has its strengths and its drawbacks. I think Zeppon has done an excellent job of balancing the strengths and weaknesses of the Pond's head, and it comes in at a remarkable price compared to the competition. While it's not perfect, I think a lot of users will be pleased with this new offering by Zeppon, and some of its major shortcomings can be addressed through either firmware or updates, provided that Zeppon is listening to its customers. After nearly two years, the Pond system may not have surpassed our expectations but I think it met them.